It's the same hustle, it's the same day. Same tears on the we play. Maybe one day we will see. We're one big family, like it's one channel. It's the same sunshine, it's the same rain. The same struggle, just to maintain. Maybe one day we will see. We're one big family, like it's one channel. Welcome back to Discussions with Indigenous Education. Uh, before the break, we went over symbolization and we discussed a little bit of the historical context on how race was developed. And we all know how race was used to as a symbolization method, right? To symbolize inferior versus uh, superior. And, you know, rich versus poor and a whole lot of other things that uh, America has done, right? <laughs> um, and, and now we want to talk about dehumanization as a stage of genocide, you know, remembering that classification and symbolization, the first two stages, when combined with the third stage, dehumanization, is genocidal practices, right? And so we're going to read, um, we'll read dehumanization for you one more time, and then we'll start getting into that a little bit. And I'm going to go ahead and read that. And okay, we'll go, all right. Okay? Mm -hmm. It says, dehumanization, as the word suggests, is a process by which a particular group is marked as subhuman. And we'll just leave it there because, you know, that's enough. You understand that, you know. And so um, we talk about the dark-skinned Indian, right, and the genocide of that dark-skinned Indian referencing the southeastern portions of the United States and that's because again a lot that's where a lot of the slavery took place mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. you know that's why we can really kind of pinpoint it in that area however the brown skin Indians were all up and down the east coast right right darker <laughs> darker Indians yeah. further south you know lighter Indians farther north but we're actually going to talk about the 1700s we're actually going to talk about the Lenape people for a minute you know specifically the Delaware Lenape which were also called Moors <laughs> right now with respect to this we I do want to um, just share with the viewing audience that at this time, the moor was also a term used to describe the group. It wasn't respects to their nationality, you know, or um, where they came from. A right? lot of times it was just the shortening of the term Blackamoor. Blackamoor. Okay, <laughs> right. And so now um, the Delaware Lenape were known as Delaware Moors, right? And they were also... <laughs> They were also known as fierce in fighting, right? <laughs> um, but then you had another population of Lenape that were a lot more passive um, and with, the, colon with the, the colonies, right? And so let's talk about what the system did to dehumanize the Delaware Lenape, the, the darker-skinned Lenape tribes you know, of South Jersey, D Delaware, even a little bit of Maryland, because again, you know, the lines were a little bit different during this time. Yeah, um, well, this act, it was called uh, the Scalp Act. The Scalp Act, yes. wow, okay. And it was enacted in uh, April of 1756. Mm. Mm. And, um, and I do believe that uh, that war was declared. Was it war yeah, was war declared was against the Lenape, the, the Lenape the, and in particular the Delaware? In Lenape. particular, right. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so this act was for them, okay? Again, it's called the Scalp Act. And it says the act legalized the taking of scalps for money. The act has specific bounties based on the age and gender of the scalped individual. That's ridiculous. It's just terrible. Dehumanizing to its core. Very. No, but, but wait, See, till you, wait till you hear. <laughs> it's, oh, gosh. A male scalp above the age of 12 would be given 150 pieces of eight or the equivalent of $150. So, again, that means a child of 12 
because get his head and no you not only do you not only are they promoting children being killed but then you got to cut off their head and bring it to us before we bring before we let you have some money right and uh, <laughs> and just think about the the mentality that that breathes in the families of these murderers right the you know, listen, who cares? They just money for us. A 12-year-old child, boy, right? Yes, but wait a minute, it's even worse. Mm. How can you get worse than that? Mm. All right, let me read the next part of the act. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> for females above the age of 12 or males under the age of 12, the bounty would be $130. Oh, man. So they were literally ch killing children. Killing children for money. For money. For bounties. For bounties. You know, and these, these dehumanizing things are, have been left out of the, the general history mm -hmm. when we're talking about the indigenous. But it exists as family stories to these colonizers. These are the reasons why a group would feel superior after hundreds of years of being allowed to be superior through laws, right? <laughs> you know, the disdain the that could possibly breed within inside of an individual against an individual of my color is evident through the, the historical record. They meant to do this to the, you know, the, the dark-skinned Indian as a way to erase us. They were literally trying to wipe us off the face of the planet. Yes, and um, initially, it, well, initially it was about wiping the entire indigenous population mm -hmm. just, just off because just, we, we need this land. Y'all, you're, you're in our yeah, way. Y'all in our way. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. and, but then after a while, you know, so like we're seeing up into this, you know, in the late 1600s, you know, we're starting to get this little race thing. Mm -hmm. So it's like, oh, you know what? Maybe we have a binary way that we can get rid of these people, you know, <laughs> some of them through these laws, you mm -hmm. know, by mm -hmm. making them become something that they're not black. African mm -hmm. <laughs> or mm -hmm. black, you mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. or if we just continue to marry into these tribes. Uh, yeah, right, 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 right. That, that blood quantum. Yes. You know, yeah. which, is, which we showed you again, it just erased uh, <laughs> the, the dark skin it indigenous the population. Skin, and then it made where people who were 116th Indian, where they were able to become an Indian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right, right, right. Where is, you know, someone such as myself that may have actually more, more like 15, 16 <laughs> in native indigenous blood, I still cannot be an Indian. Yes. And it's wild. With that said, this talk, you know, we're talking about dehumanization. It matters where, because we're talking about institutions right now, right? Because we're talking about genocide. And so let's just, you know, mention one thing that really needs to be <laughs> mentioned as a part of the dehumanizing aspect of United States governing systems against the dark skinned population in general, recognizing that, you know, we've verified in these just last three shows that we're talking about a Negro, the, an Indian population that's being labeled as Negro, right? And that the Constitution of the United States itself. And again, when this, now again, this was written not too long after the Scalp Act. Right, 1776, okay. yes. right? Mm -hmm. And so now, and these same people that were incorporating the Scalp Act are in Pennsylvania while they're making this Constitution. And, and how do they feel about any non-white man? Rather, you know what I mean? It's not because <laughs> again, remember, white women ain't not included in this either at this time. Right. You know, that's another conversation <laughs> for another day. But they labeled the the slave population as one fourth. I mean, I'm sorry, three fourths of a person. You talk about dehumanizing. <laughs> now, granted, you it know. Was, well, again. The it was, it was always, it was about money. It was about the money. It right? was about money. <laughs> and so um, this particular, you know, aspect of dehumanization may not necessarily been um, for genocidal practices, 
However, the fact that you could look at someone such as myself and tell me I'm not a whole human being, I'm only three-fourths of a human being, is dehumanizing. And not only that, though, uh, when they labeled the three-fourths, it was only about the money. Mm -hmm. It wasn't about <laughs> humanizing these people so that they are now maybe three-fourths of a person and not a whole person. It wasn't even about that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was just about the money. And that and that was it. So it wasn't about the indigenous people or or about the people that they're talking about, you know, about humanizing them. It wasn't about that at all. All right. And so it's actually it's time for us to wrap this show up. But as we wrap this show up, I want to do something a little bit different that I just thought about. And I want to show images and I want to show the images of the dehumanizing of the dark skin indigenous population, the dark-skinned Indian here in the United States, eventually being categorized as Negro. And so now we have to use those dehumanizing images, right, and facts and laws, right, eventually turning into now being identified as the black population, recognizing that individuals such as myself, a dark-skinned Indian, is um, has been categorized, right, into this black identity, whether I want it to be or not, right? The symbols that are used to depict our history, our triumphs, you know, whether, well, I say triumphs, right? They call us lazy. You know, so many dehumanizing images that I can, that we're showing you as we're, you know, just finalizing this, this show, which is stages two or three, of the 10 stages of genocide, which is symbolization and dehumanization. That's why I wanted to end it with images. You can see for yourself if you feel like this is dehumanizing, right? <laughs> yes. And so, uh, so much more to get into. Again, we're talking about 10 stages. We've only gotten to the first three stages. So I hope that they continue to learn something new and that you stay engaged as we continue to offer these. So we hope to see you next time on Discussions with Indigenous Education, the Genocide of the Dark Skin Indian. Peace. It's the same hustle, it's the same thing The same tears on the we play Maybe one day we'll see We're one big family Like it's one